the director of the Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today on this incredibly special occasion. Please welcome Chaplain Major Marlon Brown from the 1st Infantry Division to deliver our invocation. Please stand with me, if you are able, for the invocation and remain standing for the national anthem as played by the 1st Infantry Division Band. Almighty God, we are thankful today for the opportunity to rededicate this museum as a testament to your blessings upon our nation through the lives of President Eisenhower and his family. This ceremony represents the investment and hard work of many passionate people. Bless them and their contributions to this facility and its mission. May countless citizens of this great nation now and in generations to come, be reminded through their museum experience of one of our greatest servant leaders and a champion of peace. May we never forget the selfless service of President Eisenhower to deliver a peace from which we have all benefited. Grant us all the strength and ability to pursue peace as he did, recognizing that true peace is a gift from you. Finally, Lord, bind us together in a remembrance and celebration that honors the Eisenhower family, this renewed museum, and our beloved nation. In your holy name, amen. Please be seated. As we rededicate this museum in honor of Ike and Mamie, my heart is filled with gratitude and joy. A lot of people have made today a reality, and there are not enough words to express my depth of gratitude to each and every person who played a role in this renovation project. Every member of the Eisenhower team on this campus is absolutely committed to honoring the legacy of Dwight David Eisenhower and his beloved Mamie. This commitment shone brightly over the past 14 months as we weathered the storm that is a construction project. The team jumped many hurdles and faced challenges that could not have been predicted, and they did it with grace and compassion. The Eisenhower Foundation worked diligently over the last few years to complete an incredibly successful capital campaign which provided the funding for this project. Arm in arm, the foundation and library staffs created the roadmap which led to this spectacular new exhibit. The National Archives partnership with the Eisenhower Foundation is the key to our success and the very reason we are able to share Ike and Mamie's story in their own words with you today. I am grateful. The integrity and professionalism of the library staff is beyond measure. I cannot begin to describe the efforts put forth from our employees to make this finished product such a glowing success. It truly took every one of us. While some were focused directly on this project, many of our colleagues took on extra duties to continue our day-to-day -day operations. Each and every employee went above and beyond. 
Every single staff member contributed to this finished product in a way that would truly be impossible for me to describe and do any justice. The only words I am left with are thank you. Sincerely and truly, thank you for what you are doing with what you did with such amazing style and the utmost professionalism, the whole shebang. I am humbled to be a part of this team. We are fortunate to have the support of our agency in Washington, D.C. The National Archives and Records Administration leadership stood beside us the entire way, and their guidance was absolutely invaluable. The services provided by everyone involved in, by, in this project, which include the exhibit design firm, the historian panel, the fabricators, the case makers, the contractors, all of this, everyone was astounding to do this project. And it truly takes a village. I am very proud of this village. Of course, it goes without saying, we are truly indebted to the Eisenhower family. The Eisenhower grandchildren, David, Anne, Susan, and Mary Jean, were intimately involved in the guidance of these new exhibits. They brought a knowledge to the table that only they possess. Thank you. We are honored to have Mary Jean provide the keynote address. Not only is she Ike and Mamie's youngest granddaughter and a foundation board member, but for years, Mary Jean served at the helm of People to People International. This organization was created during President Eisenhower's administration and is one of the many ways Eisenhower sought world peace following World War II. Without further ado, please help me welcome a very special lady and my dear friend, Mary Jean Eisenhower. Good morning. That was better. One more time. Good morning. Good morning. All right. And welcome to this milestone event in the life of the library. It's an indescribable pleasure to see the museum's open, exhibited, excuse me, I'm sorry, the museum exhibits opened and so vivaciously regenerated. If asked what is my favorite or best part, I would have to say all of it. I love hearing and seeing our grandparents' story in their own words and their own voices. They come alive. I love their message of founded values, their belief in humanity, their sense of not only justice and integrity, but also their sense of humor. They were all about honor and respect, and while there were some incomprehensible difficulties, ultimately they believed in the everyday citizen, the peoples of the world. This is the People's Museum. Right after John F. Kennedy's inauguration in 1961, Ike, or Little Ike as his family referred to him, there was more than one Ike, uh -huh, wrote a description of leaving a lifetime as a public servant. He shared that after the hoopla was over, a car waited for Mamie and me. We got in, closed the doors, and rode off to freedom, where I would take on the most important title of my life, that of private citizen. So all of it, the conveyance of granddad's heart, whether it's an historic document, artifact, recording, photograph, personal effect, the exhibit clearly conveys his love of country, his love of people, which is concealed in his bursting call to protect and defend, comprises places as a place of learning, reflection, and yes, fun. It's a library and museum not only dedicated to honoring and the telling of his legacy, but also honoring and the telling of the legacy of the great people of this nation and the world. In the future, this campus will continue to convey the glory of humanity, the education that should not, should not and cannot be lost, remembrance of past days, and hope and clarity for the future for all of us. Heartfelt gratitude goes to the scores of people who have made this possible, the donors, the Presidential Library and Museum, the Board of Directors of the Eisenhower Foundation and staff, the city and citizens of Abilene, the town that he loved so much, and all who were lucky enough for us to have been involved. And in closing, I'd like to thank you, kind of in proxy, in Ike's own words. It's taken from his farewell address to the nation, January 17th, 1961. This was his passion, his goal, and his belief of what the world could be. It says, to all the people of the world, I once more give expression to America's prayerful and continuing aspiration. 
We pray that peoples of all faiths, all races, all nations may have their great human needs satisfied, that those denied opportunity shall come to enjoy it to the full, that all who yearn for freedom may experience its spiritual blessings, that those who have freedom will understand also its heavy responsibilities, that all who are insensitive to the needs of others will learn charity, that the scourges of poverty, disease, and ignorance will be made to disappear from the earth, and that in the goodness of time, all peoples will come to live together in a peace guaranteed by the binding force of mutual respect and love. Thank you indeed from Ike, from his family, and this private citizen for the part that each and one, every one of you have had and are still having in answering his heartfelt prayer. Thank you, Mary Jean. One of our key agency executives, one that stood by our side during this project, is here today. I am honored to welcome Deborah Wall, Deputy Archivist of the United States from the National Archives and Records Administration. Thanks, Don. Good morning. Good morning. I bring greetings from David Ferriero, Archivist of the United States, and the entire National Archives leadership team in Washington, along with our Felicitations, and that's one of President Eisenhower's favorite words to the library and the foundation on a job. Well done, very well done. We thank the Eisenhower Foundation and its staff for their generous support, and the staff of the Eisenhower Library, led by Don Hammett, for their hard work, not just on the renovation, but for the work they do every day. I toured the museum yesterday, and it's a tribute to the indispensable partnerships between the National Archives and the foundations that support our 14 presidential libraries. These alliances are critical to the National Archives' mission to make the records of the federal government available to every citizen. It's how we hold our government accountable, it's how we preserve our nation's history for the next generation, and it's how we learn from our past. It's vital to our democracy. Presidential libraries are a uniquely American institution, giving our citizens such a close look into the inner workings of our government and the lives of our leaders. I believe it's fitting that this rededication occurs between the 75th anniversaries of two enormous historical events, events especially important to the Eisenhower story so marvelously told in the redesigned museum. For it was 75 years ago last June that General Eisenhower led the invasion of Normandy in Operation Overlord. And it will be 75 years ago next May when Ike announced that, quote, the mission of this allied force was accomplished at 0241 hours local time. Germany was defeated, the war was over. The Overlord invasion and victory in Europe are bound tightly to Ike's future presidency. His success in those endeavors brought bipartisan support for an Eisenhower presidency. And as you'll soon see, the new museum exhibits do an exemplary job in tying these two streams of his life together. They show how one flowed directly into the other. Next June 23rd will mark yet another important 75 year anniversary. It was on that date that a triumphant Dwight Eisenhower returned to Abilene for a hero's welcome, complete with a parade down his hometown's main street. But that wasn't the only history made on that date. The Eisenhower Foundation was also formed on June 23rd, 1945, and planted the seeds, which eventually grew into this magnificent 22-acre campus, now host to Ike's boyhood home, his library, his final resting place, and his museum. On the day of his homecoming, General Eisenhower announced, the proudest thing I can claim is that I am from Abilene. 75 years later, I think he would be very proud of his library and his museum as well. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Much like we could not do what we do here without the support and guidance of our agency leadership, our exhibits and educational programming are made possible thanks to a strong relationship with the Eisenhower Foundation. Now I'd like to invite my partner in all things Eisenhower, the Foundation's Executive Director, Meredith Slichter, to make a few remarks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum. 
48 years ago, on October 14, 1971, we actually dedicated a new addition to this museum. Now we are once again gathered in the same location to celebrate the new exhibits. While many of you here made this historic renovation possible through your donations, I'd like to take a moment to recognize some very special people. First, our lead donors to this project, the Hall Family Foundation, the William T. Kemper Foundation, board member Tim Holm and his wife Brenda, who mobilized Abilenians and Kansans with the Home Family Challenge, the Sunderland Foundation, the DeBruce Foundation, and the Jones Testamentary Trust. Second, our project contractors, the PRD Group, who oversaw the exhibit planning and design, J.E. Dunn, who managed our construction, Jacobs, who managed our project, and Trainer at HL, our architect, 1220, who fabricated the exhibits, and third, I'd like to um, appreciate our NARA colleagues who helped shepherd this renovation, and especially Don Hammett, William Snyder, Tim Reeves, and Doug Griffith. And finally, my colleagues on the board, and especially my staff, Lisa, Denise, Emily, and Mitzi, thank you so much for your dedication to this project. This incredible group raised the funds, provided direction, and did whatever was necessary to make this renovation a reality. It was by no means without the challenges, but the result has been very gratifying. I'm fortunate indeed. I now invite Steve Hauge, the board chair of the Eisenhower Foundation, to give some remarks. It is an honor to represent the board and the staff of the Eisenhower Foundation at this special ceremony because this renovation of the Dwight D. Eisenhower Presidential Museum will bring the legacy and lessons of his lifetime to a larger audience. Using modern interactive techniques and incorporating current scholarship, this renovation offers a more compelling portrayal of his experiences and influence as our Supreme Allied Commander in World War II and as our 34th President of the United States. At the Legacy Gala tonight, we will thank specific donors, but let me say here that Kansas and Kansas City in general, and Abilene in particular, have supported their favorite son in a grand way. Indeed, they provided three quarters of the funds for the renovation of this museum built, as you may know, from Kansas limestone. How proud Ike would be. And what an appropriate time it is to celebrate this event. With the 75th anniversary of D-Day this past June, and the similar anniversary of VE Day next May, this retelling of Ike's magnificent story is more than the rededication of a building. In today's challenging world, it is our rededication to the principles by which he lived. He grew up with Midwestern values, integrity, responsibility, hard work, frugality, and family. At West Point, he embraced duty, honor, country. In fact, the one yardstick by which I test every major problem, he said was, is it good for America? In war, he learned humility, which must always be the portion of any man who receives a claim earned in the blood of his followers and the sacrifices of his friends. Thus he later could declare, only justice, fairness, consideration, and cooperation can finally lead men to the dawn of eternal peace. Presidential historians now rank him as our fifth best president. To us, this is not surprising, because we are all beneficiaries of his life of service, well and truly lived. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. 
Well, we need to make this official, but before I line everyone up, we've talked about two gentlemen, and, and I thought I should actually introduce them to you. Skulking in the corner <laughs> is uh, Tim Reeves. He's our um, deputy, arch our supervisory archivist and deputy director, and William Snyder. He's our museum cura curator. These are two of our content experts on campus, and we leaned on them very, very heavily to produce this. So. So we're going to have the ribbon cutting now. Um, um, and then after that, I'd like you to come on inside and meet Ike and Mamie again for the first time. Uh, but please give us a few moments for a few photos, and we'll need to clear this off before y'all come in. So don't rush us. We'll, be, we'll take care of it. Uh, so now, Deb, Steve, Meredith, Mary Jean, Tim, William, please come to the center. And I'd like to invite any donors who would like to participate to come on the left and the right. You stand.